All right, now we're going to go ahead and do part two. So part two in our practice assessments includes now talking about cylinders, spheres, cones, as well as a couple of uh, references to the function work from the first part. So um, also point out, yes, of course, you can use a calculator. Now, for number one, a cylinder has a volume of 78 cubic centimeters. What is the volume of a cone with the same radius and height? So for this, it's very important to remember a very key relationship when it comes to cylinders and cones. If we use the same height and the same radius, then there is a specific ratio, and I'm pointing to it on the board for people in the room, there's a specific ratio that relates the, the volume of a cylinder to the volume of a cone. So, all right, so specific relationship here is that the volume of a cone and volume of a cylinder are varied by the fraction one third. So if you already know the volume of the cylinder and it's 78 cubic centimeters, all you need to do to find the volume of the same cone with the same dimensions is do one third of this, okay? One third of 78 is 26. So the correct answer here is choice A. All right, so there's no additional work. You don't need to know what the radius of that is. You don't need to know what the height is. I mean, yeah, I guess you could, you could figure out one possible combination, right? A height of four and a, and a sorry, a, yeah, a height of four and a radius of something else. Maybe that could work, but you don't need to do that. You don't actually need to do that. If you recognize the relationship between the cylinder and a cone, you just need to do one third of the volume. Okay? All right. So, number two. The graph here shows the relationship between the radius and volume for many cones whose height is six inches. Which of the following are true statements based on this? Okay, number one. Is the relationship between the radius and volume a linear relationship? If this was a linear relationship, that means if I graph it, it's going to be a what? A linear relationship is going to make a line. Is this a line? The answer is no, it's not a line. Which means now if I read the next statement, the relationship between the radius and volume is not linear. That is true. Okay, it's kind of counterintuitive, but yeah, it's, it's true. When I do that relationship, I get a non-straight line. I get a curve. Okay? There's reasons for that. We'll cover those in future future unit. If the radius of the cone doubles, the volume of the cone doubles. If I go from a radius of 1 to a radius of 2, that's doubling, right? What happens to the volume? Here the volume is like 7. And when I make the radius 2, the, the volume is like 26-ish. Okay, I know that's ballpark figures. But is that doubling? No. Seven to, if I'm doubling it, 7 should go to 14 or 6 should go to 12. Okay, so the radius of the cone doubles. The volume does not double. It, it increases by more than that. How about this one? If the radius of the cone doubles, the volume of the cone is multiplied by 4. Hmm, that's a possibility. If we say, all right, well, that's maybe 6 or 7, and this is about 26, 27. That's really close to 4. Okay, that's pretty close to 4. So that's true. I'm using the graph to figure that out, by the way. If the radius of the cone is 2 inches, the volume of the cone is about 25 cubic inches. So radius of 2, volume, it's a little over 25, but it's close enough. We can say that's true. It's about, it does say about, right? So we can say if it's within a couple, that's totally fine. All right, so B, D, and E are actually the true statements out of here with that. Okay, next. If we have a sphere that's got a radius of 2.7 centimeters, and we want to know to the nearest cubic centimeter, what is the volume? So we look up, we see we've got a volume formula here, okay? That's 4 thirds of pi times the cube of the radius. So 4 thirds pi r to the third, okay? That's our volume formula for a sphere. So if the radius is 2.7, I'm going to do in my calculator 2.7 to the second power, and that's 7.29. Then I'm going to multiply it by 3.14, and 
and then I'm going to multiply it by 4 thirds. And I get 30 and a half. Okay, just about. I get about 30 and a half. And it doesn't quite make sense with what I got, but 2.7. Did I do 2? I did it right. I think so. 4 thirds power. Oh, you know why? Because I squared it. Oops. I did. I, I, that's my fault. 2.7 to the third power, not the second power. 2.7 to the third power. Sorry about that. Then times pi. I blame the calculator. And then times 4 divided by 3. And that's going to be 82 and a half. So 82 and a half, that rounds to about 82 is the closest answer. So our answer is choice D. Okay. Don't forget that it's, that it's the radius to the third power. Kind of like what I just showed you there. Okay. Radius to the third power, 3.14 for pi, then times four thirds. Okay. All right. We go on. We're going to go past number four because we, we skipped that one. We're going to go to number five. Number five says a cylinder has a radius that's 1.6 meters. Its volume is 95 cubic meters. What is its height? Okay, so for this one, we have to do a little bit of equation work, okay? So for this one, we're gonna say, well, the volume, remember for a volume of a cylinder, if we wanna find the volume of a cylinder, we go with uh, V equals pi R to the second power times the height. That's our, that's our volume formula, okay? Now, if I want this, let me just make it a little bigger. If I want to use this relationship to figure out what the height is, I can certainly do that. One possibility for you is to think, well, if I was to do pi r squared and then multiply by the height, I would end up with the volume. I also can simplify this and just think, well, if I take the volume and I divide by pi r squared, that would also give me the height. So I can do that one of two ways. For now, what I'll do is I'll make it an equation. Okay, so 95 is my volume, and I'm going to use 3.14 for pi, and I'm going to use the radius that I'm given, which is 1.6, and I'm going to end up squaring that, and then there's a mystery number, a height, an x, if you will. So let's simplify that. Let's go with 3.14 times 1.6 squared, and on my calculator, I get 8.0384. So that means 95 is going to equal, let's increase the height a little, a little bit, 95 is going to equal 8.0384 times the height. So see here, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to divide 95 by this 8.0384, okay? 95 divided by that to get out, to get what h equals, because we know single step equations here. So I get 11.0384. 818 for that. Okay, when I do that division, I end up with h equals 11.818, which is since I have to round to the nearest tenth, I'm just going to say it's 11.8. Okay, so my solution here is that the height is equal to 11.8, in this case, meters. Okay, so we have to kind of work out that solution because we know what the volume equals. We know what we get with the volume. So we have to kind of do the rest of the math and then divide it into the volume to find out what the height would be. Okay? We use some algebra techniques in there as well to get that information. All right? Okay, next, number seven. With number seven, there's many cylinders with a height of nine inches. R is going to represent the radius and V is going to represent the volume. So our job is we have to complete the table relating the radius and volume of cylinders with a height of 9 inches. Write each volume as a multiple of pi. This is one of those instances. Remember how I've said in the past you can use either or? This is one of those instances where you have to use terms of pi. Okay? It also, well, it says right to or round to the nearest cubic inch. So it does say that, right? So I prefer that you would do it in this case, do it with pi. But I guess in this case, based on the directions, yeah, you totally could still round it if you want to. All right. So... If the radius is 1, if the radius is 1, height is 9, what will we get for the volume? Well, since it's pi r squared h, remember our volume formula, pi r squared h. Let's actually, can I copy that? No. No, it's not going to let me copy that. Fine, I'll be that way. <laughs> I'm going to take that with me and just not type it again, but that's fine. All right. 
Volume is pi r squared h. So if the radius is 1, it's going to be 1 squared times the height of 9 times pi. So the volume in this case is going to be 9 pi. 9 pi. Okay? So there's our volume. If the radius is 2, that means we're going to do, I'm just scrolling up to see the final formula, 2 squared, which is 4, times the height, which is 9, that gives me 36 pi. And then if I make the radius 3, 3 squared is 9. 9 times the height of 9 is 81 pi. So 81 pi would be my volume there. So that's our volume table, okay? Of course, yes, if you use 28 point chain, whatever, right? That's fine too. 36 times 3.14 is fine too. 81 times 3.04 is, is fine as well. So if you did this problem and you put uh, rounded answers in here, that's fine. Okay, is there a linear relationship between the radius and volume? Is this information going up by the exact same amount each time I increase the radius by one? If I go from 9 to 36 pi, and then from 36 to 81 pi, is that the same amount each time? Okay, that's not. 9 pi to 36 pi is an increase of 27, and then 36 to 81, that's an increase of 45. So the increase is different each time. This is not a linear relationship, okay? Oops, I used the wrong box here. No. Increase is different from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. And then lastly, this is the last question, if a cylinder with height of 9 inches and radius r is filled with water, it can fill a certain pitcher. How many of these pitchers can a cylinder with height of 9 and radius of 2r fill? Okay, so for this one, this one, if, if, I would, if I were to give this question on an actual test, I would give you sample radii to use. I would say, hey, if you got a height of 9 and the radius is 1, it will fill a certain pitcher. And then if I double that radius, what happens to the volume? What happens to the volume? And also, how many of those pitchers would it fill? Okay, so this one here, this, this is what I would call, and I was talking to Mr. Lynch about this this morning, this is one of those unnecessarily complex questions. Because all it's really asking you is saying, hey, if you have one cylinder that will exactly fill a pitcher of water, and then you take another cylinder that's twice the radius of the original one, how many of those pitchers can you now fill? And even that's kind of a complex. I would still word that differently if I was to put it on a test. Okay, But it's really just asking you to compare the volumes of in terms of water pitchers, for lack of better terms, okay? So let's say I had a water pitcher that could hold nine pi units of water. And I increase the radius to two of the original water cylinder. How many of these nine pi pitchers can I now fill? Okay, even that's still complex. Even that's still tricky, okay? Here's another better one. How many times bigger is 36 pi than 9 pi? How many times bigger is 36 pi compared to 9 pi? 9 times what would give me 36? Every time I ask the question, it gets easier. 9 times what equals 36? 4, okay? So if I had, so the way this question would work, basically, is if you had a pitcher that could fill up a 9 pi, or yeah, if you had a picture that holds 9 pi units of water. If you double the radius of this cylinder, you can now fill four of those pictures because the volume is four times larger, okay? So four pictures would be the correct answer, okay? And I understand, yeah, it's unnecessarily complex, okay? But that's what we're here for. Okay, so that is part two. That is all we have, all she wrote for that, okay? Now I'm going to uh, wish you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you then.